God became as we are, that we may be as He is. That is God's purpose. That is His plan which He set forth in Christ for the fullness of time. But God Himself never left us. And therefore, God cannot return. I am with you all to the end of the age. Therefore, God has never left humanity. And therefore, He cannot return. And yet, in the promise of the Holy Spirit, the coming of a definite divine person is promised. Scoffers will come in the last day scoffers and say, Where is the promise of his coming? Of his coming? For ever since the Father fell asleep, all things have continued as their work from the beginning of creation. So a definite person is promised. Now this is my theme tonight. God and man are permanently made one in the person of Christ. God became as I am, but without Christ revealing it, I would not know it. God became as every child born of woman. And yet that child could go through the ages and never know that God became him. And the purpose is that he may become God. He will not in eternity know it unless he knows it in the person of Christ. Now this is what I mean. I'll take now the first book of the New Testament, the book of Galatians. Not in its canonical order, but in its chronological order. It was the first book written, either that or First Thessalonians. But it's a talk that was in a year or two. And this is Paul's reading biography, his confession. He said, I will have you know, brethren, that the gospel which I have preached is not according to man's gospel. For I did not receive it from a man, nor was I taught it, but it came through a revelation of Jesus Christ. He was not speculating, trying to set up some workable philosophy of life. This is something that came through revelation. Revealed truth is that which you cannot logically prove. It's something that is entirely different. It's as real as this room, more so. But it's something that reason cannot put its teeth into it. Now this is my theme. You mean God became me, and through the centuries, I have walked, and God within me, and never left me, not for one moment, not even in my dreams at night. He is the dreamer in me, and the waker and the dreamer are one. And here he never left me, not for one moment. And I didn't know it until Christ came. But Christ comes to us individually, not collectively. He comes to the individual and reveals to the individual who that individual is. If you study the scriptures, but when it came to me, I certainly was the most startled person in the world. I was awed. I could hardly believe that the man that I know so well, that did many things of which I am ashamed, and possibly today I'm capable of doing similar things. And still, in spite of that, he came to me and revealed to me the being that I really am. Well, who is this Christ? As Paul said, he did not receive it from a man.
he was not taught it by a man. Well, I make the same confession. I did not hear it from a man. I was not taught it by a man. It came through revelation. I had never known for one moment anything about this revelation until the night that it happened. Oh yes, I had heard of Christ. My mother taught me Christ. In school, I was taught the story of Christ. But then, I went out into the world, I saw pictures on the wall. And they told me this is the artist's concept of Christ, painted under inspiration. And here they are, 40 or 50 different pictures of Christ. No two looking alike, each claiming that it was inspired by the original me. And no two are alike. That is not Christ. What the churches teach concerning Christ is not Christ. The Christ of Scripture is David. That is the Christ. There is no physical description of Jesus in Scripture. There is a physical description of David in Scripture. And when he comes, you know him instantly. There is no uncertainty as to who you're looking at. And no uncertainty as to the relationship between you and the one that you're observing. And then you go back, stunned the next day, and you search your scriptures to find that it was always there. But he is the anointed one. He is the Christed one. He is the chosen one. Rise and anoint him. This is he. And then the Spirit of the Lord came upon him mightily from that day forward. And so I have found David. And with my holy oil, I have anointed him. And David then cried unto me, Thou art my father. As I told him in the beginning, he was my son. Here is the relationship. Well, you would not know in eternity that God became you, actually became you, and that you are permanently made one, but you will not know it, say, with the coming of the person, Christ. Not some immensity, not some enormous glow of light that would not convince you that you are God. It could not convince you that you are the Father of the Son of God. All the power in the world could not convince you that you are the father of the Son of God. The Son has to appear. And when he appears at that moment, in the twinkle of an eye, you know exactly who you are. And all the darkness is gone, and now you know, and you walk in the light. Walk telling it to those who will hear it. And giving reason to everyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you, for it is now supported by Scripture. Prior to that, you didn't find it, and you're not encouraged to find it. For no minister that I ever heard, no true teacher that I have ever heard, has ever voiced it. I never found it in a book that I've ever read. It was in the Bible, but I didn't see it. <clears throat> but all the other books that I read, in my hungry search for the truth, did not even breathe it. When I first came to this city, back in 1945, the lady who met me at the airport and brought me over to the hotel, and she possibly uh, didn't quite notice the time. So when I came to the meeting, I was about almost at the time to start talking. <clears throat> but the head of the organization called me aside into his private office. And he said to me, I've heard some very distressing things about you. I said, like what? He said, I have heard that you do not treat the Bible as secular history. I said, no, I do not. I had not yet received the vision of the Son of God. But I knew the Bible could be interpreted psychologically. For I have proven it day in and day out. Not only to my own satisfaction, 
But those who heard and believed what I told them, they too changed their lives based upon my interpretation of scripture. <clears throat> so he said to me, from my platform, you cannot say anything that I heard that you were saying up in San Francisco. I thanked him. I said, I will abide by your decision tonight. I'm your guest tonight. I was addressing his alumni. And there were about, I would say, 500 present, all graduates of his institution. And so I spoke to the crowds who were there. 